Uncle Charles, are you ready, son? And we are live, Shalewa. Just praise the Lord. Grace and peace to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone just, uh, just give the Lord a praise. Come on, let's worship him. Hallelujah. In the presence of the Lord today. Thank you. Hallelujah. Be glorified. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Apostle Charles, would you go ahead and welcome the people of God and begin to worship just for a minute or two today in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Apostle Biswat, son, welcome the people of God today with opening prayer. Thank you. Go ahead. Yes. Let's pray. Hallelujah, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord. For your glory, O oh Lord, for your mercy, you, uh, <clears throat> we together, Lord Jesus, we come together for uh, so that we can worship you, Lord Jesus. We can glorify your name, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. All the time, O oh Lord, all the time you bless us, Lord Jesus, every day, every morning. Lord, you bless us in a new way, Lord. Thank you, Father. Today we have come, we came here, Lord Jesus, so that we can... We can glorify your name, Lord Jesus. We are praying for all the coming leaders, those who, are, uh, those who are joining here, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, we are praying for all the leaders, all the all the uh, country, uh, those who are joining here, Lord. We are praying for Mama. We are praying for uh, Papa, Lord Jesus. You help them. You help them. Anointing. Oh, Lord, we are praying for Holy Spirit. Please come and touch all, all, all upon us, Lord. You bless, you, uh, you anointed, anointed them, Lord Jesus, to your Holy Spirit, Lord. So that we, when we, we will hear your voice, when we will hear your word of God, Lord, you talk with us in our heart, Lord, so that we can obey your word of God. We, you, we can obey your, your command. You can obey your, your word, Lord. Thank you, Father, uh, that all the time, all the time you... Be with us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Oh, Lord, we are praying for especially in India, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, all the leaders here, those who are here uh, joining in our prayer, in our prayer time, Lord. Oh, Father, you bless us. You bless all the family, Lord. You bless all the family, all the ministry, Lord. You, you guide us all the time, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for that, son. Greatest and peace to you in Jesus' name. Uh, I'm going to move forward in the service today. Hallelujah. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. 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 H
Greetings in Jesus' name. This is Dr. Kilafo Kali, and I'm delighted to be with you from the Kami family and the people of God around the world. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're not on our Zoom live, you are joining us live on Facebook. I'm going to ask all of you to like it and share it right now on Facebook. Let the world know that we love Jesus and we're not ashamed. Amen. In the midst of this Amen. pandemic, we are lifting up the name of Jesus. We are determined to keep Jesus Christ as the foundation of our life and our hope. And we're not ashamed to declare his name. Hallelujah. If you're not ashamed, wave your hands and just let everyone see that you love the Lord and you are grateful yeah. for what he's done. Come on, just wave your hand. Come on, wave your hands to the Lord. Everybody, wave your hands to the Lord. Wave your hands. I can't see you, Bundu. I can't see you, Gidu. I can't see you, Daniel. I can't see you, Maxwell. Come on and just worship oh, the Lord for him. He is worthy to be glory praised. I want to just... Thank all of you Hallelujah. this morning for this wonderful time. And uh, let's Amen. move into our service this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Again, this is uh, Kingdom Apostolic Ministries and Kingdom Apostolic Global Network service time. And this is a time we're delighted to be in the presence of the Lord uh, for what he is doing. Amen. Amen. I can't hear you say amen. 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 I want to get ready Amen. for the soul service. Uh, would you just go ahead and play that? We're going to get ready for worship this morning. We're going to be worshiping the Lord in the beauty of holiness. We're going to be lifting up his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're going to let the world know that we're not ashamed to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you, I love you, Lord, today. I love you. I love you. Come on, sing. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me in such a special
Praise the Lord. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus. There is none like him. There is none that can compare to him. There is none that can come close to him. I want to sing another song quickly. Whoa. Hallelujah. This song says, Falling in Love with Jesus. Rewind that for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can stop that. I want to sing a song today, um, Falling in Love with Jesus. As we read it, that song, I just want to thank the Lord for you all. And we want to just worship. Just lift your hands and worship the Lord wherever you are this morning. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing. We just want to bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. As that one is being paused, we're going to sing this song. It may be new to some of you. It might be old, but we're going to sing a new song. It's called Falling in Love with Jesus by Brother Jonathan Butler. I want you to worship the Lord with me this morning, and let's bless his holy name. Sing it with me this morning. Hallelujah. 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 How many are falling in love with Jesus all over again? This pandemic Man. and this world and everything has Man. told us, hey, that we, we ought to just trust him and just love him. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Come on, lift up your hands wherever you are, on the Zoom or around the world, as we worship him. Oh, yeah. The best thing. And the song goes, falling in love. Are you ready to sing? Oh yeah, oh yeah, falling in love with Jesus, falling in love, say, with Jesus, give me the volume, come on, falling in love with Jesus, it's the great, it's the best thing. I've ever done. In his arms, I, I In his arms, never disconnected. In his arms, I feel protected. 
what you have. Come on, sing it. Yes, sir. That's it. And let it be a sweet, sweet. Yeah. 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 I love you, Lord. Glory. And I just want to tell you, you know, we watch the 
Lord. We're calling it out. And this month of uh, January 2021, watchers, we want to invite you to worship the Lord with us today. I'm going to just ask you to prepare your hearts. I'm going to ask Daniel, sorry, Maxwell, son Maxwell, to come on, and he's going to give you a word of encouragement for a few words. I'm going to come back and to the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Son Maxwell, praise the Lord. Maxwell from Mozambique, hallelujah. All right, we're going to just ask Maxwell, unmute your mic and just bring the blessings of the Lord this morning to the people of God. I want to just uh, highlight this mighty man of God as he comes to bring the mighty word to encourage us today. Look into that camera, son, and speak the word of life to the people of God today. Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you, Papa. Um, I, I don't know if it's a teaching or I don't know if, if it's just a, an encouraging word. Uh, maybe you can advise me on that. Yes, just encourage the people for a few minutes, encourage them and just speak a prophetic word to bless the people and encourage them in this dome and those listening around the world. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Papa. Uh, blessings and grace be upon everyone uh, in this uh, wonderful meeting. I bless the Lord for all of us. May the Lord bless us for being here. Uh, those from different nations, from Africa and outside Africa, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord bless all of us. Uh, I take this as an opportunity also to just thank the Lord for being part of this wonderful platform. Uh, just want to encourage all, all of us uh, from what I've been also encouraging the saints uh, during the week from the book of Haggai chapter 2. And uh, we were reading there, the Bible says that once more I will shake. The Lord says in Haggai chapter 2, he said, Once more I will shake not only the heavens, but also the earth and all the sea. I will shake, but he said he will shake it for a purpose. So I just want uh, to read from there. Then I just speak a certain word, a prophetic word for all of us uh, to encourage ourselves. Haggai chapter 2, the Bible says, uh, verse 6, For Thursday is the Lord of hosts once more. It's a little while I will shake heaven and earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. So the Bible says here, the Lord is saying that once more I will shake the, the, the heaven and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And verse 7 says, I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations, and they, I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. So, we are in the midst of a shaking where nations are shaking uh, because of the pandemic and uh, the economy and whatsoever is going on around. A lot of people are in fear. Many are afraid. But the Lord is saying there is a shaking in all the nations. And this shaking is for a purpose that all nations should come to the desire of all nations. And in the King James, in New King James, that word desire of all nations, they put it in a capital D letter. The Bible says that the reason why the Lord is bringing the shaking is for all the people to come to the desire of all the nations. And the desire of all the nations is Jesus Christ. So the pandemic and everything that is happening around, it's for the purpose of, uh, of God that the nations should come back to the Lord. And the Bible says that through, through that shaking, the temple will be filled with the glory, the house of the Lord will be filled with the glory. There is a glory that the Lord is preparing and has prepared for the, such as the time as we are in, that is in the midst of this pandemic, there is a glory that the Lord is bringing upon the church. I just want to encourage us as the church in every nation, as the body of Christ, wherever we are, 
that this shaking on the other hand is for the better of us as the body of Christ because it is through us that nations will come to the desire by seeing Jesus feeding us with the glory by seeing the manifestation of his kingdom in the church nations will run to the house of the Lord the nation will run to the board of Christ for the for the for the Lord to fill them uh, for the Lord to save them if you continue with the book of Haggai going down there the Bible says in the in the book of, 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 of Haggai chapter 2 verse 9 that the glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, says the Lord. So through the uh, in the midst of the pandemic, the Bible says that the Lord will make the house, the temple, his body to be filled with the greater glory than the former house. And the Bible says in the church, in the house of the Lord, there will be the greater peace. So I just want to speak prophetically to you that may you be encouraged that in the midst of this pandemic, the Lord is bringing that greater glory upon his house. And all nations will, all nations will desire Jesus Christ. They will run to him for answers and for solutions. Be encouraged that this pandemic is for our own good as the house of God. Because the Lord is pouring out a, 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 a wonderful and glorious times upon us. There is glory that is being poured upon us. Be encouraged, men of God. Be encouraged as a board of Christ. We are in the kingdom. We are in Mount Zion. And the glory is coming in the midst of this time that we are in. For the name, for the glory of the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless over all of us. And I speak that may this glory not miss you. May you flow in this glory. And in the power of the kingdom of God that he's pouring upon all of us as the church in the midst of this pandemic. In Jesus' name, may the Lord bless all of you. Amen. Thank you so much, Papa, for the opportunity. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you for that word. Just for that atmosphere, we begin to worship. I want to just worship one more minute before you who are just watching and joining us. This is Apostle Dr. Kilapa calling the Kingdom Apostolic Ministry family around the world, a Kingdom Apostolic Global Network. We're delighted to be with you live with the leaders from the nations, and uh, we are uh, expanding the nations of the world. But this day, we're talking about Jesus, the foundation of the Kingdom of God. And if you know anything about us, we teach, preach, and declare the Kingdom of God here around the world. Those who are watching live on Facebook, we welcome you in Jesus' name. Get ready for a powerful teaching. Get ready for a powerful word. I want to speak prophetically. Those who are listening and watching, this is the month you're going to have a visitation from Almighty God. <clears throat> this is the month you're going to fall in love with Jesus again. This is the month you're going to see him in all of his glory. This is the month you're going to experience his power. Hallelujah. We're worshiping him. We're talking about him. We're loving on Jesus. And I thank you for this. Those of you who have been praying, worshiping, praising the name of Jesus, we thank you for joining us and worship. Thank you for getting your families to worship. Thank you for getting your ministries to worship. Thank you for getting your community to worship. Thank you for letting your nations worship. Hallelujah. As we worship around the world in this pandemic, the Lord showed me the glory of his presence is going to fill the earth. Nations are crumbling. Governments don't know what to do or where to turn. Mandero. I see you there. Those who are listening, watching. But the kingdom of God is in the earth. The wisdom and the the kingdom of Jesus Christ is filling the peace. Hallelujah. I prophesy and I hear by the Spirit of God that the Lord is giving his true church. Those who built their foundation of Jesus Christ as the solid rock, as Jesus is the chief cornerstone, you are going to be protected and prepared and propelled. Foundation. I've heard it as I speak to leaders around the world. Many have built their foundation on fame and fortune and on money and on membership, and now all of that is crumbling. Many Christians build their faith on their job, their career, and has crumbled, and the only 
holy foundation. I declare if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, he will be a firm foundation. He is the chief cornerstone. He is the foundation on which the apostles and prophets Ready? I'm about to release. Come. Words into your life. She's going to share shortly. But before she comes, we are gearing up. Hallelujah. To release the word of the Lord into your life and our life. We bless the Lord for you. Wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, we just honor the Lord for you. I declare the saints of God. I, I want to break power of prayer. I see the spirit of prayer. That nasty demon, this multiple demons by the name of prayer. Hey. Hey. The spirit, that demon of depression. I break the power of the people of God around the world in the name of Jesus. We in the Let's rebuke the spirit of death. I hear death. This week I had to break the spirit of death. And the people of God, Lord, begin to show me. The spirit of depression, that is a nasty spirit. The spirit of fear, the spirit of death, wanted to invade the lives of the people. The Lord said, No, no, break it off your life. If you're walking far, you feel the spirit, the spirit of encouragement is coming. And if you hear the Lord say, Rejection, rejected by so many people last I am breaking fail. I'm talking about Shandara by the fire. Almighty God, we break the spirit of fail by fire. I break it by fire. To each you believe it? I, not my might, not my power, but by the spirit of Jesus Christ. <laughs> It's not Jesus who does it. It is Satan. But I set you free by the name of Jesus. I declare healing power. Let's stretch your hands. Wherever you are, wherever you are, wherever you are, wherever you are, I want to let you know that spirit of death and hell and disease is broken. Over the last Amen. month, we've seen more car crashes. In the midst of a pandemic, people are dying by the number of the spirit of death that is over this nation. Break it! Break that power. Power that means to kill the people. Hallelujah. But I put the fire of the blood of Jesus around us. If you believe that, put fire. Type fire. You, yes, come. God bless you. Come. God bless you. Hallelujah. If you're being blessed by this, get ready. Because we're going to speak protection over your life. I apply the mighty and powerful blood of Jesus over our minds. I hear the Lord say, torment. The spirit of torment that troubles you at night. It tries to keep you up at night. It has you worried about what you're going to eat. The way the money is going to come from to take care of your bills and your family. I said, put that fear away. And I put the faith of Jesus over you and I. That we will trust the name of the Lord. We bind that spirit of fear. That devil. Those are demons. It's not Jesus. It is the devil using demonic powers that torment your mind. To make you worry about the business, about the contract, about the finances, about your family, about getting this corona. It feels like the devil is saying, you're going to lose your mind. But we cancel those words. Shout, I will not lose my mind. I want you to shout, I will not lose my mind. Shout, I will not lose my mind. I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Get ready, people of God. Hallelujah. If this word is blessing you, I release the fire of God. As God's an apostle, 
with this prophetess and powerful we come together in unity to speak over our lives and our family by the spirit of the living god i stand in the authority as a son of god as a kingdom man as an apostle of jesus christ a servant and i speak favor i speak protection i speak faith to arise all spirit I want to just highlight a few things for those who are listening or watching. Get ready. I want to encourage you to get in the name of the Lord like never before. I want to encourage you. Everyone I has this is a big time relationship of 52 weeks. It is powerful. It is going to transform your life in 2021. Let's go to Amazon and get this. Hallelujah. It's worth the investment. Hallelujah. Maybe at the end of the month, we're going to do a launch and we will bless a few of you with this. I want you to get this book on sonship. This sonship book is powerful. It's going to bless you. It's called You Are My Son. This is a big story. It's going to reassure you. You don't have to be afraid. If you are a son of God, if you are a child of Jesus Christ, if you are a son, I'm not worried about anything. I trust in my father because I'm his son and he loves me. You are his son and he loves me. You are his father. Father, I want you to get this book and we can spell all your fears and your fears and your worries. this like this share this get ready hallelujah i'm about to worship this woman time then we have a powerful word from this woman of god she is a powerful woman of god not because uh, she's my wife i'm saying that but i'm telling you she is a powerhouse she loves the lord she has a prophetic word and she's been preparing diligently hallelujah all of this time and all this month studying and studying and studying she's been before the lord She's been in the teaching of the scripture. I want you to like this and share this play quickly. Every one of you on Zoom, go on Facebook, the Kilapa Kali page. Share this, share this, share this with your church, with your ministry, with the people of God. Share this there and far because this word is going to bless you. I want to guarantee that the Lord is going to speak to your life. If you get your Bibles, get your books, open up your heart, the Lord is going to speak into your life. Hallelujah. I know the power of God. Hallelujah. If the power of God can get the faith in you, you can change the world. I wanted to prophesy today 
that this word that is coming is going to so change your life and mine and ours. Everyone who listens and hears this word is going to be so powerful. It's going to cause us to shake the world. Amen. Christ. I want you to get your hearts ready. Amen. Put up your mind. Spirit of the Lord. Come on, worship with me. Lift up your hands. As to Lewa, Marina, Holly, a mighty woman of God, a prophet to the nations, truly is, a voice to the nation, a prayer warrior, and a teacher, a preacher, a wife, a mother, a businesswoman. I'm telling you, an author, I'm telling you. God has stretched her and she's allowed the Holy Spirit to stretch her to do above all that you can even imagine. I'm amazed at the, the stretching and how God is using her life. And I'm telling you, you're going to be blessed by this woman. She's going to pour out the word of God and the faith of Jesus Christ in your heart. You're going to be blessed. Praise God. I'm going to worship this song. Worship the Lord with me. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus, Lord, Holy Spirit, we welcome oh, you. Lord, oh, Lord, Lord. Your name. Yes, Lord, you are worthy to be worshipped, worthy to be praised. Unless you want to be to be honored. Oh, no. Lord, we glorify your name. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I sing praises to the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord. Praises <clears throat> oh Lord, oh your name is great and great be Chile was coming. Stay to the end as we worship the Lord.
Hallelujah today. My respects to Apostle Dr. Colin. Hallelujah. A true man of God, a worshiper, and a wonderful leader. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. A man, hallelujah, up to the Lord's own heart. I praise him and I greet all of you, our saints. We have some wonderful leaders from all over the world. I greet you all of your <laughs> All of our leaders, uh, followers from Kingdom of Public Ministry. <laughs> Bring us thank you from whatever platform. Hallelujah, you are watching us from. God bless you and we love on, you in the mighty God. name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I come to you this morning to talk on the topic, no other topic than returning to your first love. Come on. Somebody say returning to your first love. To your first Hallelujah. Love. Now I want you to get your pens, your notepads ready. Hallelujah. This morning. We, are, we have a lot of scriptures to go through, and for the sake of time, hallelujah, some I will just, hallelujah, be giving you the scripture passage so that you can go and search it, hallelujah, for yourself, but I will be highlighting all of those important points when it comes, hallelujah, to returning to your first love. And so when we talk about returning to your first love, our two scripture passages is taken from the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 2, reading from verse 1, hallelujah, to verse 7. And 1 John 4 and 19. Those are our two uh, scripture passage, key passages for this morning. Someone shout hallelujah. Now, Ephesus, hallelujah, from this book, which this letter was written to, was a city in, in the then Asia Minor or present day Turkey. Amen. It was a commercial city famous for its games and pagan worship, a notable city of idolatry and superstition. It is a city that is not different from what, hallelujah, is obtained in our cities today. We have nightclubs, we have secret societies, we have those seeking power through agents of Satan and through demonic spiritual leaders. And so here, God, hallelujah, in this city, God used ministers, powerful ministers, Aquila and Priscilla, a husband and wife team, glory be to the name of God, who often travel uh, with Paul and Apostle Timothy in establishing the church. Later you will find that Apollos, hallelujah, he was a disciple of John the Baptist. He also was there. And also it is mentioned, as I will highlight later on, that John, hallelujah, the one who wrote the book of uh, Revelation, he, hallelujah, spent his last or latter days in this city. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Now, according to Acts chapter 18, hallelujah, verse, verses 18, 19, and 24, verses 1 through 8, verse 70, chapter 1, verses 1 and verse 3. We find that actually, hallelujah, this particular church came out of a defiled society. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2, 2, 2 and 3 said, Wherein in time sat ye put into the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversation in times past. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. In the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of God, even as others. Glory be to the name of the Lord. In the
they love the Lord. Amen. They left everything and followed the Lord. At the time, hallelujah, when Revelation 2 was written, a lot had changed, hallelujah, as we can imagine, and as history has taught us. Amen. The church at Ephesus was a church that though, hallelujah, they were dedicated to the Lord. They were dynamic in their labor. Hallelujah. They were determined on long suffering. Hallelujah. Their love for the Lord had still declined, just like many of us today. Amen. They had the activities going on, but underneath, hallelujah, their first love, hallelujah, was gone. Glory be to the name of the Lord. They have forgotten, they had forgotten that functioning. Hallelujah. It is only because of the power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is only because of the power of God to save and to keep us righteous. It is nothing that we are or that we can do. Hallelujah. Within ourselves. And so that was why the Lord was so concerned. That's and he good. sought for the means, hallelujah, to bring them back to their first love. That's Somebody good. say, get back to your first get love. Get back to your first hallelujah. love. Hallelujah. And so the verdict of the Lord against them was, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Uh. As he confronted them, he also doing the, he's also doing the same to you and I today. We ought to examine ourselves. Hallelujah. Someone say, Hallelujah. And wherever we would have lost our first love, we should repent and go back to the, our first love and to the works, hallelujah, that our first love has taught us to do. Hallelujah. Remember, when you were first saved, people of God, it was a delight to be called brother and sister so-and-so. Amen. You would be sure to walk circumspectly that to ensure that everyone see that there is something different, hallelujah, about you. Every time the church door opened, you would be there. In many cases, you would be one of the first, hallelujah, to attend. Amen. You would make sure to sit and read your Bible because you want to read this word, hallelujah, everything that this word says. You want to, uh, you want it to, hallelujah, engulf you and you just emerge yourself, hallelujah, into the word. And then on the other hand, many of you who are watching, hallelujah, you have never thought much or give too much into this God or salvation, hallelujah, thing. But now, for some reason, it has your attention. Hallelujah. So you may be searching. Well, glory be to the name of the Lord. The book of Revelation. Write these down because you're going to study it. Hallelujah. I pray that the Lord open your eyes, that this message be in clarity to you, that when you go over these scripture passages, hallelujah, you will be able to dissect them and they will be Hallelujah, embedded in your heart today. So, Revelations 2, hallelujah, verses 1 through 4, verses 9, verses 13, verses 19, hallelujah, 3, verses 1, verses 8, verses 15, glory be to the name of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 24 and 12, Jeremiah chapter 17. Verse 10, see you even find me in the Old Testament. Hallelujah, this morning. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 10. Hallelujah, verses, hallelujah. Uh, chapter 23, verses 24. And Psalms 44 and 21. All of these scripture passages, people of God, talks about the discerning of the Lord of his sheep. Can you imagine the Lord himself? Hallelujah, he has a discerning of his sheep. Somebody ought to give him glory this morning. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus Christ is the all-knowing Lord of his sheep. Hallelujah. He knows them in and out, and there is nothing hidden from before him. As he addressed the church in Ephesus, he made them to understand that as Lord, he holds the seven stars, which is the, which is the angels of the leaders of the church. Hallelujah. And that he also walked in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, hallelujah, which is the churches. This shows his sovereignty and his 
worship over a sheep that will never end. Hallelujah. And over all the ministers. We don't have power or anything. Hallelujah. Unless it was given. Hallelujah. To us from the Lord. Sadly. Hallelujah. Or in, in some cases I should say. Sadly. That the gifts and callings of the Lord are irrevocable. And so. Hallelujah. The Lord wouldn't take back. Hallelujah. The gift that he would have placed on you. But many corrupt these gifts. Hallelujah, and you said, hallelujah, Satan. But as Lord over his sheep, he declares that he knows their works, amen. He made them to understand that he knows everything about them, just like he knows everything, hallelujah, about you and I today. Hallelujah, people of God. Nothing, I reiterate, is hidden from before him. And so as the, the, this epistle was written towards the other churches, he also allowed them or makes them to know, hallelujah, or makes them to understand that he knows about them. This is what he did in all of the other churches. This shows again that before the Lord, nothing is hidden. I don't want you to get this confused, hallelujah, or forget or overlook this important fact. And so as believers, the Lord knows everything about us. He knows the state of our hearts. He knows our lukewarmness, people of God. He knows our lackadaisical attitudes. He knows everything. Hallelujah. Psalms 44 and 21 said, Shall not God search this out? For he knoweth the secrets, hallelujah, of the heart. We can hide our present spiritual state, hallelujah, from our leaders in the church. We can hide in some cases from our family members, hallelujah, but we cannot hide them, hallelujah, from God. This is why you need to open up, hallelujah, to God to allow him, hallelujah, to allow his touch, hallelujah, to be engulfed in every area, hallelujah, of your life. Not just in some, not where you need, hallelujah, to feel spiritual, not where you need a breakthrough, hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord searches the heart and tries the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing, amen. Jeremiah 17 and 10. And so this morning I put to you, watching those of you who are sound of my voice hallelujah in your spiritual walk or your quest your quest for a relationship hallelujah who are you trying to please hallelujah with your actions it is it yourself that you're trying to please you need to prove to yourself that you are spiritual is it a friend Hallelujah, because your friend and those who, hang, who you hang out with appear to be spiritual. So you have to also be that way. Hallelujah, so that they could think, hallelujah, of you. You are in lead, spiritual leadership. Is it your peers, hallelujah, so that they can think, hallelujah, that you are more, hallelujah, than what you are because of yourself? Is it, hallelujah, a congregation? Is it your leader, hallelujah, the one who you submit to, hallelujah, who pray, hallelujah, over your soul? What makes you do what you do to prove to yourself and to others that you are saved? Hallelujah. I'm going to give you just a quick minute, hallelujah, to write down the answer, hallelujah, to this question. I want you to write the honest answer, hallelujah, to this question. And while you are writing, hallelujah, the honest answer, if it's something that you have to think about, then go ahead and write that question down. What makes you do what you do to prove to yourself and others that you are saved? Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to note, people of God, it must be of note that it is not about doing, hallelujah, <clears throat> to please God only. Glory be to the name of the Lord. <clears throat> While you are writing. Hallelujah. <coughs> While you are writing. Amen. In that sense, 
doing things, hallelujah, or putting on a show, giving glory, hallelujah. I'll just get some water while you are writing, hallelujah. What makes you do what you do to prove to yourself and others that you are saved? I'm going to get some water while you are doing that. Amen. Amen. The air, hallelujah, just have to be adjusted. While you are writing, all right. So I want to say to you, it is not about putting on a show to give glory and honor to the Lord. <clears throat> Acknowledging him as your Lord, owner, and allowing his Holy Spirit to dwell in you and be fully utilized. This, hallelujah, is what gives glory and honor to the Lord. Many are saved. Many profess to be saved. And many are doing all of the right things and showing that they are saved. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, they don't acknowledge him. They don't allow him, hallelujah, to rule and reign in their life. Hallelujah. He said that he would never leave us. Jesus now comfortless. Amen. He is Holy Spirit will be with us, he said. The Holy Spirit will give us power. The Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. Amen. Etc. Another important note for the Holy Spirit is that he will remind us of everything that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ would have said. How will we how will we, we be reminded of what the Lord would have said if we don't have the Holy Spirit, if we don't ask the Holy Spirit, or if we don't allow the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, to tell us of these things, amen? How would we, how? Glory be to the name of the Lord. Imagine a Lord that puts himself inside of you and inside of me. Amen. He bestowed upon us the infinite wisdom, hallelujah, that we can do and accomplish everything, that we can see and understand his word, and that it can be related or relative to everything, every aspect of our lives. Amen. Yet we act and feel and think, hallelujah, as people of God, that we have to dress a certain way. You have to do these certain things. And may I ask, may I interject that while you are doing these certain things, you must be seen, hallelujah, while you are doing these certain things. You have to say to everyone that you encounter throughout the day, oh, I am blessed and highly favored of the Lord, or I am blessed, hallelujah. You have to go to church or you have to go to this particular church, hallelujah, because this man or woman of God is so anointed, and this is where the anointing is. Hallelujah. When I say to you today that this is, these are all vanity, vain, 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 and vanity. Hallelujah. Vanity. It is not until we realize that he wakes us up every morning, and it is a privilege. He was the one who orchestrated that job for you and I to make money. Hallelujah. He was the one that orchestrated that person, hallelujah, to bless you in whatever they, way they would have blessed you with, with clothes, with food, hallelujah, with shelter in many cases. It's not until you realize that he was the one who allowed you, hallelujah, to be severed from that job so that you can prove him, hallelujah. It is not until you realize that he is the one who was able to provide your next meal, Hallelujah. Even though you go to the food store, hallelujah, to buy that pork chop or to buy that vegetable pot pie, hallelujah, or for those of you in India, hallelujah, to buy that roti and dal, hallelujah, to buy that masala, hallelujah, to buy, hallelujah, that egosi soup, hallelujah, in Nigeria, to buy that endole, hallelujah, to buy that chambo to buy that ackee and codfish, hallelujah, in Jamaica, hallelujah, to buy that burger. It is not until you realize, hallelujah, that his will, hallelujah, is for you to have his good pleasure, hallelujah, that he loves you and you are on his mind, 
It is not until you realize that he is a king. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is a king with a kingdom. Hallelujah. Many still don't know what we talk about when we say the kingdom, hallelujah, of God in which he is king. But it is not until you realize, hallelujah, that he is a king with a kingdom in which he wants to activate inside of you. Glory be to the name of the Lord to give you power, hallelujah, because you are useless without him. And you will only walk in fear like many of us are walking in fear today. Many leaders, hallelujah, as I am told in many parts of the world, because of this lockdown, hallelujah, this corona, they are turning away from God. You cannot even mention salvation and faith, hallelujah, and God to them. These are people, hallelujah, who was lifting up the name of Jesus who was given glory to God, hallelujah, in a mighty and powerful way that others were seeing God, hallelujah, through them. Yet still, hallelujah, they turn away, hallelujah, from God, hallelujah. And these are just the name of few people of God. It is not until you realize these things that you will get back, hallelujah, to your first love. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to say return to your first love. Go ahead. Hallelujah. And type that if you are on social media. Hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. People of God, I want to let you know this morning that it is not about you. Hallelujah. It is not about what you feel. Hallelujah is right. And I say this for myself. Hallelujah as well. Rather, hallelujah, it is about him. It is about what he says, hallelujah, in his word. He is, hallelujah, the living word. And to help you understand this phrase of what we mean by saying that he is the living word, many of you, hallelujah, who are watching from Jamaica or Jamaicans, hallelujah, from all over the world who are watching, if you are watching from Jamaica, just give us a thumbs up hallelujah so you can realize and others can see what i'm going to say hallelujah understand what i'm going to say in this example and so in jamaica even now just as an example hallelujah if someone see a child that resembles a parent let's say they resemble their father amen hallelujah let's say their father's name is fitzroy and so they see this child and this child looks so much hallelujah like fitzroy what they do is look at the person and say or look at the child rather and say this child is the living fitzroy amen do you get what i'm saying this morning and so when we say hallelujah that he is the living word hallelujah we are talking about christ he resembles his word his word, his word is made up of him. His word is made up by him. Glory be to the name of the Lord. We know the scripture that talks about the word that became flesh, hallelujah, and dwell among us. And so he is, hallelujah, the living word. Somebody ought to shout amen and type amen if you get that, hallelujah, this morning. Glory be to the name of the Lord. So let me tell you, hallelujah, some more before I go on some more about the history of the church in Ephesus as we talk about our first love. Amen. Again, it was among the largest city of the Roman Empire in Asia with a high population and a thriving commercial center. It was an eminent religious center with temples built for several gods. Amen. Especially the temple of Artemis or Artemis. Amen. Hallelujah. Christianity in Ephesus was introduced by Apostle Paul, it is said, around 52 AD. Before his visit, Jews as well as Gentiles lived in that city. Paul is said to have visited the city. Hallelujah. Apostle Jacob, I know we have a theologian, many theologians here. Hallelujah. Uh, among us. And so I know that they, hallelujah, can uh, testify, amen, or verify hallelujah what i'm saying and so paul is said to have visited the city of ephesus together with aquila and priscilla and i just want to interject hallelujah quickly there many say that women have no place 
hallelujah, to minister the word of God. I want to let you know that men and women together, this is a perfect example. Aquila and Priscilla, they're a husband and wife team, hallelujah, that went and traveled with Paul. In some cases, the Bible tells us that when some don't understand, uh, both of them, they would, hallelujah, make persons to understand, hallelujah, or to do right, hallelujah, according to the word of God. In the book of Timothy especially, you will see that many women, hallelujah, were leaders, hallelujah, in the church. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Yes, we know our rank and our order. Glory be to the name of the Lord. But women, hallelujah, too, have their place. Hallelujah. We cannot get the scripture wrong and take it out of context. Glory be to the name of the Lord. In every world or system of this world, hallelujah, there's an order of organization. Hallelujah. And so we know where we ought to be. But glory be to the name of the Lord. The woman in any event is the glory of the man. And so in some cases, hallelujah, many may not agree with me in this uh, season, hallelujah. But in many cases, if the woman is the glory of the man, hallelujah, why would it not be that your wife knows as much, hallelujah, as you do or know how to minister? What if something or what if a stage or an event is said and you're not able to go and deliver? Hallelujah. Would you rather all the time for someone else in the congregation, another female, hallelujah, especially, or another male who you have raised up to go and represent you? Why not your wife, hallelujah, who would understand and know and see the works of the anointing of the Lord working through you, hallelujah. Yes, she may not want to be in forefront of ministry, but she should be able to deliver in whatever aspect, glory be to the name of the Lord, on the word of God. And so let me continue quickly. And so Apollos, Apollos one of John the Baptist's disciples, also taught in Ephesus, but he only taught about the, uh, the baptism of John. Upon Paul's return, hallelujah, he also taught, hallelujah, upon Paul's return to the city, hallelujah, there were followers following the teaching of John. And he taught them about Jesus and about the filling of the Holy Ghost. So you see here, glory be to the name of the Lord, where the scriptures progress. There were instances when the spread of Christianity was threatened by the pagan ways of the city, such as magic and paganism. But Christianity, I want you to know, Christianity through Apostle Paul and through the works of Apostle Paul, Hallelujah, it began to spread. Glory be to the name of the Lord, because Paul works as we know. Hallelujah, it was stronger than those of magician. It was stronger than those pagans. Hallelujah, it reminds me, hallelujah, of Pharaoh's uh, sorcerers that he used. Hallelujah, glory be to the name of the Lord with Moses. When they turned the snakes, hallelujah, the sticks into snakes, hallelujah, but the snake, hallelujah, of the Lord ate up all of the other snakes. Apostle Paul was so powerful, hallelujah, as people were being healed by his handkerchief. You will find this, hallelujah, in the book of Acts. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul later, hallelujah, left there. Hallelujah for Macedonia. Apostle Paul left Aquila and Priscilla when he went there. Hallelujah to establish that church. Hallelujah. Acts 20, 28 through 38. Hallelujah. After his after Apostle Paul's departure, then Timothy pastored the church in Ephesus for a while. Paul continued to instruct the church through letters sent to Timothy. John the Apostle, as I mentioned before, is said to have lived in Ephesus in his old age before he was exiled. Hallelujah to the Isle of Patmos. Hallelujah. Another important note. Paul taught the church the importance of unwavering love and dedication to God, as well as the love for one another as the body of Christ. Here ends. Hallelujah. Here emphasizes what we are talking about, returning to your first love. Paul taught about the importance of unwavering love and the dedication, hallelujah, to God, as well as the love for one another as the body of Christ. Where is our love for one another as the body of Christ? Where
where was our where is our love hallelujah for the lord people of god all the instructions that apostle paul gave were focused on remaining faithful to god and living hallelujah with each other in love so why is it as believers we have to tear hallelujah each other apart when we are supposed to walk in love, loving God, because God, hallelujah, himself is love. In Ephesians chapter one, verses 15 through 16, Apostle Paul here again comments, hallelujah, he commends the church, hallelujah, for their love for all the saints. And later he urges them to walk in love. There must have been something important about love, hallelujah, the love of Christ, Glory be to the name of the Lord. And so what is happening now, presently, hallelujah, Ephesians or Ephesus, as we know, no longer exists. Hallelujah. Because there were accounts of whether it was the uh, glory be to the name of the Lord. There are very various accounts as to what happened as to the ruins. Hallelujah. And now that's all it is, a Roman Empire ruin. Amen. Hallelujah. But I want to point out to you and I who are watching, hallelujah, today in Turkey, it is said that there's a, it, that place, hallelujah, Turkey now, which was the, which is the present day, Asia Minor, where Ephesians, hallelujah, the church of the Ephesians were, it is 99% Muslim. No wonder why the Lord was telling them about loving each other. Imagine the foundation that was laid upon them through Apostle Paul. Hallelujah. What happened throughout the years? Glory be to the name of the Lord. Why is it so important for us to get back to the, our first love, loving the Lord and loving one another? Hallelujah. One thing I want you to take away. Hallelujah. Or another thing I want you to take away from this message, that it is evident that the glory of the Lord will leave the church if we are not obedient. Hallelujah to the Lord and the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. By returning our first love. Amen. 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 Revelations 2, verses 4 through 5. In the book of John 21, hallelujah. John chapter 21 and verse 3. Mark 4 and 19. Galatians 4 and 15. Matthew 24 and 12. 2 Timothy 4 and 10. Hebrews 10 and 39. 1 Timothy 5 and 12. It talks about the decline in love of the saints. Amen. The word of God says again, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou was left thy first love. New believers, as I mentioned before, always have a, this great zeal and passion to serve the Lord. They don't mind leaving everything for God. Some now who are in search of the truth, they will leave. Some are at the point now because of this corona and all that is happening over, all over the world. Uh, even in Indonesia, we have seen that a few days, I think yesterday or a few days ago, there was a volcano uh, eruption so close to where people are living. Many places around the world in Jamaica, uh, here in the Bahamas a year and, and a half ago, there were tsunamis or amen, major flooding. People lost their homes, everything they have were destroyed. Many are willing to give up because they have tried everything else and there is nothing else or no one else to look forward to. They are willing to give up everything now in search of the Lord. But what happens after that, amen? Their commitment to the things of God is very high. That was how, hallelujah, the church of Ephesians or Ephesus began. They allowed the kids of the world to decrease their love for the Lord over the time. They were still coming to services. They were still preaching the gospel. They were still giving alms and offering. They were still standing for truth. They were in, they, but in the midst of it all, they lost their first love, which was the greatest thing. Imagine us today, even though we had this pandemic, the church was shut down in most places for a bit. In some places they are open now. It's back to the activities 
It's back to the singing and it's back to the order of service as set. There is no changing, no room for the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, to move. No room, hallelujah, for even repentance, hallelujah, to change our life. It's just business, hallelujah, as normal. Their services didn't have the first love as it was supposed to have. That's why 1 Corinthians 3, 13 rather, verses 1 through 3 says, made us to understand that without love, everything we do is not acceptable before God. We can do all kinds of things, but that doesn't mean, hallelujah, that it is acceptable. Apostle often reminds me, hallelujah, if he say no about a certain thing, and I desire because of my own flesh or my own heart that, you know, I really want this thing or I really want to do this thing. Because he, hallelujah, is the head of the household. He is the priest. He is the king. If I go ahead and do it, hallelujah, even if it is out of a good heart, if it is out of a good will, the point is he said no and he is not pleased. Hallelujah with it. So guess what? It is all in vain. And so if we continue to do these things, hallelujah, it is just in vain if we are not being obedient. And if our master and owner, people of God, is not pleased. The Lord had something against this dedicated and committed church in Ephesus because they left their first love. And I want to remind you and I today that God, hallelujah, the word of God help us to know that he, hallelujah, is love. What about us today? Have we not left our first love? Our commitment to serve, hallelujah, and service to God is now out of necessity, many of us, hallelujah. Many have shifted their attention to other things and the Lord is no more number one in their lives and it is for all of us to check, hallelujah. We always rush in and rush out and leave the Lord waiting, waiting endlessly, hallelujah, for us, not taking time to hear from him. We pray, we take the time to pray to him, but do we take the time to hear what he has to say? To hear what he has to say through his Holy Spirit. Glory be to the name of the Lord. It's like someone that went on a date with their spouse. And while the spouse is there with them expecting to fellowship and have a good time, something else come up that is important to them. And they just leave the spouse there. Don't even care to come back, hallelujah, and say, you know, give me a minute to do this or to do that. I'll be right back. Instead, they just go and finish whatever it is that they're about to do and then come back and expect, hallelujah, the spouse to be there waiting. <clears throat> If we still have our first love, why don't we still, hallelujah, tell the Lord about our problems before we tell it to man? Many, hallelujah, they look to government and leaders, hallelujah, in the community <clears throat> before telling, hallelujah, their problems to God. And not only that, trusting in the Lord. If we are believers and he's our first love, why don't we trust him? Even for the very bare necessities of our life, why don't we trust him? Why don't we let him see and know, hallelujah, without a doubt that we trust him? Hallelujah, why don't we spend time with him in the same fashion that we spend time with others? It is because our love has declined and decreased. We have left our first love, people of God. We have left our first love. People who have left their first love or first faith, hallelujah. The word of God in Timothy, 1 Timothy 5 and 12 says, hallelujah, they are certain for damnation. You wonder why some people who are saints of God, hallelujah, they mess up. You wonder why they are shame and scandal. You wonder why you see and know that this person loved the Lord so much, but yet still calamity is facing them. And some of you may say it is because of generational curses and curses that they would have caused themselves and this and that and whatever. 
The whole thing is disobedience and leaving your first love. If you love someone, your desire is to do their will. You will not walk out of place and out of relationship with them. If you love someone, and in this case, our Lord, hallelujah, you will listen and change the time where he tell you to clean up all of the filthy things that happened in your generation in order for uh, even things that you would have done yourself in order for you to have breakthrough in your life. And so don't use an excuse about generational curses. It is about you, the individual. It is about I, the individual, returning to our first love. That is why the Lord is calling us, you and I, to repentance today, to return to our first love and to do the first works. Hallelujah. We must not allow the cares of this world to cause our love for the Lord to wax cold. Because when our love for the Lord would have waxed cold, people of God, everything else in our lives, hallelujah, becomes cold. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Many are carried away today with seeking men for prophetic interpretation for everything. I mash my finger. What does this mean? I had a dream. What does this mean? I had a. I need a dream book to interpretation and play a number. Hallelujah. I need that oil for the fellows to fall in love with me. I need to be down in something so that I can be protected. I need to give gifts, hallelujah, to my God, or make a God, because this one isn't working, or just, hallelujah, God, I think is better small G. Hallelujah. I need a man of God to pray for me. Hallelujah. I am not going, hallelujah, to that church because I don't like the praise and worship. I am only going to church for the praise and worship. Get the point? I and me. Everything is about I and me. And even if we don't say it out of our mouths, I and me, all that we do and say is about I and me. Hallelujah. We don't need a magnifying glass. Hallelujah. We can look among ourselves. We can humble ourselves and get ready for a change and return to our first love, people of God. Where does all these things, and these are just some examples, where does all these things equate, hallelujah, to the Lord and the love of the Lord in our lives? The truth is, I'll say again, we have forgotten our first love. Many also say, I will drink some Colorasi or Shandon or some kind of wine so that I can feel lit and excited. Hallelujah. So I can deal with this or do this and do that. Hallelujah. Uh, some women say, I will wear tight short dresses. Hallelujah. To show how sexy I am. Even in the church, they wear things that reveal every part of their body every part of their being hallelujah men hallelujah has jumped on this bandwagon hallelujah wearing tight pants hallelujah to church hallelujah tight fitted shirt hallelujah to what they call slim fit in church so that they can show their physique hallelujah so they can show their body shape hallelujah what are people to think hallelujah how can they think about the Lord, hallelujah, when all of these things are being manifested in their presence, hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. I will drive the latest vehicle or I want the latest vehicle or the latest dress, hallelujah, so that I can get the lady's attention. Another important one is I will pretend as though all is well with me and this individual, hallelujah, me and so-and-so, but really I can't stand that person. Think about it and watch it, people of God. Oh, have you heard what they said about so-and-so? Hallelujah. Quick hallelujah to hear about others' demise and destruction, and not only that, taking demise, Hallelujah, taking, hallelujah, delight in others' destruction. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Now, in some cases, it's outright sin and disobedience, hallelujah. But the word of God also taught us how to handle, hallelujah, when somebody, a brethren, has fallen. 
you have the spirit of God. You have discernment, hallelujah, to know if that person is sincere in their apologies and sincere in admitting what they would have done and want to get back on the right track. People of God, we need to go back to the dedication of our first love. Dedication to our Lord and Savior. Revelations 2, 5 and 7. 1 John, hallelujah, chapter 4 and 19. The book of John 21, 15 through 17. It talks about dedication to our first love for the Savior. We are to renew our love for him who first loved us. Start with that. We owe him everything that we are. And he must be number one. He must be named number one in our lives. As he told the church in Ephesus to repent, he is also calling you and I to repentance and dedication to our first love. One of the things that many don't talk about when they talk about returning to your first love and they expound on this text from uh, this book of Revelation, they don't talk about repentance. I want to let you know that there's an important fact that many often overlook in there. It is the fact that the Lord called the church to repent. And he is still calling the church to repent. That is the merciful God that we, we serve. He is calling us to repent. We ought to go back to our members, to our family members, hallelujah, the church members, the church followers, and say, repent. It is time to repent. I am not celebrating or taking part in any of the sin that you do anymore. Life is too critical. Time is too short. We have to repent. Glory be to the name of the Lord. If we are to do what is acceptable before the Lord, our first love for him, and I even, I'm just so overcome and overwhelmed, I just feel like shedding tears. Hallelujah, I feel like the Lord with warning people to repent. Hallelujah, for their souls to be saved, for them to experience eternal life here on earth. Hallelujah, and what happens, hallelujah, when we are caught up our life after death. As our Savior, hallelujah, he came and died for our redemption. And because of his death, hallelujah, we now live. People of God, we have lost. Hallelujah, we have lost our first love. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Are you ready, hallelujah, and willing to repent today? To be, in, to be righteous means to be in right standing, hallelujah, with the Lord. Are you willing to set apart, to be set apart today and be confident, hallelujah, that your righteousness is in Christ? The word peace, hallelujah, from the word shalom, it, it represents wholeness. Wholeness in the mind, in the body, hallelujah, in the spirit. Are you ready? hallelujah to experience this today joy as the fun is a feeling of great pleasure and happiness are you ready to experience hallelujah the kingdom of god where there is righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost today i want to share with you people of god theodore monard 1836 to 1921 he is a French Protestant pastor, and he wrote this beautiful hymn I want to share with you. It says, Oh, the bitter shame and sorrow that a time could ever be when I let the Savior's pity plead in vain and proudly answer, All of self and none of thee. All of self and none of thee. This is where many of us are today, all of self and none of thee. Even though we are giving, hallelujah, for people, even though we are sharing for people, many get carried away and don't realize that this power, become, this power comes from God. All, hallelujah, of self and none of thee. 
this passion said, yet he found me. I beheld him bleeding on the cursed tree, heard him pray, forgive them father. And my wistful heart said faintly, faintly now the wistful heart said, some of self and some of thee, some of self and some of thee. Day by day, his tender mercy, healing, helping, full and free. This is what the Lord is doing for many of us today. And this is what the Lord wants to do for you who was watching today. This is what the Lord wants to do. He wants to help you. He wants to heal you. He wants to transform your life where many have counted you out. The Lord wants you, hallelujah, to be a sign and a wonder, to be, give honor and glory to him. Many have, hallelujah, they don't realize the Lord is still working and the Lord is still moving. He wants to begin with you today. Hallelujah. Sweet and strong. And ah, so patient, brought me lower as I whispered when you're humbling yourself now. Less of self and more of thee. Less of self and more of thee. Higher than the highest heavens, deeper than the deepest sea. Lord, thy love at last had conquered. Grant me now thy heart's petition. Not of self and all of thee none of self and all of me. This is where we ought to be today. I want those of you who are listening, hallelujah, if this word has touched you, has touched your heart, that you want to surrender to the Lord, whether you are saved or, or not, hallelujah, whether you consider yourself to be a believer or not, if you want to experience, hallelujah, the kingdom of God, if you want to receive righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, I want you to repeat this, hallelujah, with me. Be humbled, hallelujah, to lift up the Lord in your life and magnify him. Salvation is nigh thee, yea, it is in thy mouth. If you confess and believe, hallelujah, the Lord Jesus, hallelujah, you shall be saved. Repeat after me. Higher than the heaven, the higher than the highest heaven, deeper than the deepest sea. Lord, thy love has conquered me. Grant me now my heart's petition. None of self and all of thee. I want you to type that, hallelujah, if you are watching. I want you to send a watch up, hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord to say, thy love, hallelujah, Lord, has conquered me. None of self, all of thee. None of self and all of thee. Glory be to the name of the Lord. I pray today, hallelujah, that our self, hallelujah, will be no longer. In everything that we do, we examine it and be sure that it is all about, hallelujah, the Lord, and it is not about us. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Uh, many of you, hallelujah, if you are watching and you feel Hallelujah, that you need to be saved or you're not saved or where you should be. Hallelujah, I want to pray for you. Hallelujah, this morning. Just repeat up to me, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. You have conquered and captured my heart this morning. Forgive me for I am a sinner. Fill me, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Lead me and guide me today, Lord. Let me not be plucked away from your hand. Help me, Lord, to conform to your will today. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for that one who would have said, hallelujah, that prayer humbly and sincerely unto you, Lord God. I pray that you reveal yourself unto them now, Lord God. I pray that they are washed hallelujah, and speak that they are washed in the blood of Jesus, and that they, hallelujah, will desire your word, that they will be washed with the washing of your word this morning, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit, hallelujah, will continue to lead them, in, lead them into all truth, Lord God. I re release your fire 
upon them as a force be lord god that will protect them from all harm and danger that the enemy will not come by the wayside that this word will be forgotten or full of with weed or they'll be confused in their walk and calling and their desire for you in jesus name i pray i cover them now with your blood hallelujah lord seal them with your mark in jesus name hallelujah i pray hallelujah amen saints of god another important thing hallelujah as we were in the word this morning i want to encourage you or rather open your eyes to say that the day of the lord is coming what do we mean by the day of the lord right now as we can see all over the world this is basically where the prince of the power of the air seem to be ruling and reigning the systems of man hallelujah coupled with satan and being agents of satan seem to be prevailing hallelujah yet not prevailing among those who are kingdom citizens but any in be that as it may hallelujah satan and his his agents are ruling and reigning they have their time hallelujah to rule and reign but on the coming day of the lord this is when hallelujah the judgment will come upon satan upon all those hallelujah who rejected uh, christ for being who he is glory be to the name of the lord they will face judgment for every work and every deed hallelujah that they would have done i urge you to be sure of your calling if you call yourself the people of god hallelujah many are just not going to be saved sadly hallelujah because the lord tells us about hallelujah the right way is a very narrow way and only few chooses that path but in any event hallelujah know that the day of the lord the day of judgment hallelujah the day when everyone will get their just reward especially those hallelujah who perform sinful abomination abominative acts hallelujah against the lord and against the word of god and his people hallelujah they will get hallelujah their just reward and so i want you to be ready hallelujah i want you to know that this lord who you serve get back to loving him get back hallelujah to doing hallelujah what is right and letting others taste and see hallelujah that the lord is good hallelujah and the lord has shown me as i wrote hallelujah the lord showed me a few things hallelujah glory be to the name of the lord that someone who is watching hallelujah this morning your soul needs to be restored when i say that your soul needs to be hallelujah restored you are fragmented you are all over the place hallelujah glory be to the name of the lord you are just uh spacey and spaced out just don't have it all hallelujah together the word of the lord said that he restores hallelujah our soul i declare in the name of jesus that your soul glory be to the name of the lord be restored right now in jesus mighty name those of you hallelujah our leaders from cami who are watching begin to pray hallelujah begin to pray with me hallelujah in your heavenly tongues as many hallelujah are watching hallelujah and saturate the atmosphere glory be to the name of the lord for a great you hallelujah i command hallelujah those who are watching that one who is in need to be set free from bondage be set free hallelujah in the name of jesus be set free hallelujah from oppression be set free hallelujah from bondage in the mind hallelujah this morning in the name of jesus as we are praying be set free be set free hallelujah be set free from spiritual blindness glory be to the name of the lord the word of the lord is saying that someone is being troubled with their air hallelujah this morning where they can barely it's it's like the volume in the air is not what it's supposed to be you can hear but very faintly in the mighty name of jesus i command you spirit of deafness to go in the mighty name of jesus be set free by the power of the holy spirit hallelujah this morning in jesus mighty name be set free be set free hallelujah in jesus name someone is walking hallelujah in fear hallelujah i want you to know and stand on the word of god that the lord did not give you a spirit of fear but a power of love hallelujah and a sound mind 
Hallelujah. I replace that fear this morning with power. I replace that fear this morning with love and a sound mind. Hallelujah. Someone is moving. Hallelujah. In the spirit of doubt, even now. Hallelujah. Your eyes will be open. You want. Hallelujah to partake in this kingdom you want hallelujah a touch from the lord but doubt hallelujah is blocking the way i speak down i reiterate even as apostle as prophesied doubt go now hallelujah go now doubt go now go now doubt in the mighty name of jesus glory be to the name hallelujah of the lord lift up your hands hallelujah just lift up your hands wherever you are Glory be to the name of the Lord. 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 Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise and glory. We thank you for all that took place, hallelujah, in this place. We thank you, Lord God, for all of those who were touched by you and your message, Lord God. I pray that you continue to work and transform their lives, Lord God. I thank you for the opportunity to be a servant of this hour, Lord God. I give you all the praise and glory and honor that you are so worthy of. Now, Father, these are your people, Lord God, manifesting their life like never before, and let others see and know of the God that they serve. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. We pray, glory be to the name of the Lord. I want to speak hallelujah over you this morning and declare that greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. I declare today that you realize and know the power you have over the prince of the power of the air. Hallelujah. I declare that you begin to realize those of you who are watching from different platforms. I declare that you begin to realize that you have been, you have been given authority over the enemy, hallelujah, over all over serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy, hallelujah, this morning. I declare that you begin to walk in it by the grace of our Lord and Jesus Christ. I declare that your heart will not faint, hallelujah, anymore but that you will be conformed, hallelujah, to the will of that of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I declare that nothing will get in the way of you returning to your first love, hallelujah, today. And I declare that nothing shall pluck you out of the hands of our Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you were blessed by the word of the Lord, just type amen, amen, and amen. amen. Thank you so much, apostles, hallelujah, uh, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, all of you in your respective places. Thank you so much, Kami members, hallelujah, and followers. God bless you, and we love you. I return, hallelujah, uh, this message back to our apostle, Dr. Kilafo Crawley. God bless you. In Jesus' name, I thank God that I was able to be a servant unto you for this hour. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless you. Keep the power. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Well, praise the name of Jesus. What a word, what a word. Thank you so much. I want to just thank the woman of God for bringing a true word. You know, the book of Revelation chapter two is where we were coming from. And that word was powerful. Why was it? Because it was a word that Jesus himself spoke in the book of Revelation two to the church at Ephesus. And he was calling them back to a place where they return to their first love. And I'm telling you, Ephesus is like today. Uh, the modern day Turkey is where Ephesus was. But we are living in a time where the world is shaken and the uncertainty is great. But I thank the Lord that we have a strong foundation 
in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. So thank you, woman of God. What a wonderful word. I'm telling you, she taught the word and laid that down carefully and with the history and everything. I was tremendously blessed. I want to just prophesy to your life just for a few people. As she was sharing, Shalewa was sharing, the spirit of the Lord was speaking to me, and I want to speak a kingdom blessing over Peter. Peter, right wherever you are, God is about to do something powerful in your life. Powerful, powerful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ramish, get ready for a mighty move of God to take place in your city. Get ready to see supernatural provision. I'm getting ready to prophesy to a few of you on Facebook and a few of you listening and watching. The Lord began to show me, Maxwell, that, that the enemy tried to fight against you, but by the power of the fire of the Lord, that attack is being broken right now. Maxwell, Maxwell in Mozambique. Get ready for Mozambique to come unto the authority of Jesus Christ. For the Lord, I see him. He has given you a mighty kingdom scepter. That means you're getting ready to reign and rule with authority by the apostolic grace upon your life. And Mozambique and Malawi and South Africa will not be able to resist your call. You're getting ready to come forward powerfully in the mighty name of Jesus. Gimpo, get ready, Gimpo. You're not poor anymore. I see the Lord creating supernatural wealth. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Everyone, get ready. The Lord is putting something in my spirit. You better tag this to someone right away. I'm about to prophesy. It's the Holy Spirit. Just drop something powerfully in my spirit. Hallelujah. As I was praying in the spirit just now, the Lord just released in my heart that in spite of the poverty and lack, the Lord said, I'm about to release to some people. I don't know who you are. There's about 10 of you listening and watching. By whatever means you're listening or watching, if you receive by faith, get ready. In the Lord's time, I'm about to create supernatural wealth creation. Praise God. You know, I was looking, hallelujah, in studying this week and, and studying the stock market and studying the coin market. Do you know that coins like Bitcoin and Ethereum and other coins and other uh, 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 shares are continually growing in, the, in life? And in spite of the pandemic, hallelujah, hallelujah, great wealth is being generated. And the Lord began to show me that his word is true. The wealth transfer will hit the earth. And that wealth must be transferred into the house of God. The wealth must be transferred into the kingdom of God, into the hands of kingdom people. The Lord is beginning to show me, position yourself, son. The Lord told me to begin to position myself, to begin to draw that business plan, to begin to write out that plan. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying in the midst of this pandemic, he's creating new opportunity. There's new opportunity for delivery services. There are new opportunity, uh, hallelujah, for uh, food services. There are new delivery for online and digital services. Hallelujah. There are new opportunities for business, e-commerce, online. The Lord said, get ready, people. Look around. The Spirit of the Lord said, I'm going to open some of your eyes. Why? Because some of you have a passion to feed some hungry families. The Lord said, those who commit to feed some families, those who commit the soul into his kingdom, those who commit the soul into missions, those who commit the sharing uh, uh, into ministries like this, who ministry is to take the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ around the world. God said, I'm going to bless you greatly so that you could sow into ministry. This money, money and these online businesses, I hear the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know who it is. If you identify yourself. I begin to speak prophetically. I don't do this often. If you begin to identify yourself on Facebook, you said, Lord, I see great opportunities. Some of you are making masks. Some of you were making clothes items. Some of you were, were, were creating a sanitizing and disinfecting chemical that can be used. God said, I'm going to cause you to connect with some people in your city who are going to manufacture what you want. And it's going to bring something to bring, uh, hallelujah, sanitization. Hallelujah. Some of you are going to start some new cleaning and sanitizing services. You said, is it me, Lord? The Lord said, yes, it's you. I have called you to generate wealth and prosperity so that you can take care of your families and your homes. I hope you are writing this down. The prophetic ministry is flowing. The Lord said, I'm going to call some of you. Hallelujah. In the midst of the pandemic, I wrote six books with Shalewa. We've written six books. Go Global Leadership. One. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. A relationship, lifetime relationship too. Hallelujah. I have three manuscripts here and another two in the room. Hallelujah. The Lord said this, and this is the old book revised. The Lord said, some of you have been looking at the pandemic and have been crying and complaining. And the Lord said, because you didn't keep your eyes on me. Hallelujah. You lost focus. But the Lord has said, I'm calling you to come back to your first love because I have some books to write. And the Lord wants the books to be written through you. There are some songs that the Lord wants to release in the earth through you. Hallelujah. There's some recipes God wants to release through you. There's some new inventions that have not even come to the earth. The Lord said this 2021. I want to prophesy about 2021. 21. Hallelujah. 2021 is the year of the uh, supernatural creative power of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you better get some people on. I'm going to prophesy just for a few minutes. And if you go on Facebook Live, I'm going to minister prophetically to you. I don't do this often, but the Spirit of God is on me heavily. And I want to speak to God's people this year. 2021 is a year of the creative power of God. Now, what does that mean? As you seek the Lord like never before, he is going to create creative ideas. The Lord is going to release creative inventions. The Lord is going to release creativity. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ah, Shalev and I are doing book series that we never even dreamt of. I mean, there is like a gush, there's a flow of ideas that has been flowing through us. Uh, hallelujah. There are creative stuff that I didn't even think and imagine. I want to release some of that upon you today. I want to release upon you that the Lord has a supernatural creative power in you. I'm getting ready to pray for some of you. Stay online. I'm getting ready to pray because you need a creative power. You don't need a dead religion. You need a living God. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. To activate the gifts, the callings, the anointings on your life. You need the Holy Spirit to release all of those ideas and manifest them for you. This is the year the Holy Spirit is going to help you and I. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit said the things, hallelujah, I'm telling you, I began to write some manuscripts uh, and I got stuck in my natural ability. And then the Holy Spirit kicked in and gave Shalewa the anointing to finish. I'm telling you, the Lord is giving you the anointing to finish. The Lord is putting people in your life to finish that which you've started. You're not going to do this alone. The Lord is going to send help. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking to me right now. He said, I'm going to send help to some people who have my heart at focus. They love me more than anything. And I'm going to finish it for them so that they can know it's not by might, nor by power, but it's by the Spirit of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of you, I don't know how that... Hallelujah, project is going to be completed. Some of you don't know how that study, that academic study is going to be completed in a time like this. Uh, hallelujah. Some of you don't know how that church building is going to be completed. Some of you don't know how that mission field is going to continue. The Lord said it's not for you to know. You just begin to worship the Lord. You begin to thank him for what he's doing. You begin to press faith. Uh, you begin to pray. Hallelujah. And watch the supernatural power of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord also showing me while we were praying. Hallelujah. That this is the year of the supernatural manifestation of the kingdom of God. I know that's a lot. But the Lord said there's a supernatural manifestation. It means deliverance is going to happen supernaturally. It means God is going to break the yokes of your life. Huh? Stuff you struggled with for 10 years, the Lord is going to drive that devil out once and for all in 2021 out of your life in the name of Jesus. If you desire, hallelujah, the things that, that weakness in your body, God said, I'm breaking it off your life. That sickness, that arthritis you struggle with, those allergies you struggle with, those migraines you carried for the last 10 years, I hear the spirit of the Lord say, I'm going to heal you quickly because I need you for my service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible said Jesus is coming for a bride that's spotless and without wrinkle. You know what that means? Before Jesus comes, and that could be any day now, we're going to be healthy, we're going to be wealthy, and we're going to be wise. I'm going to say it again. Before Jesus comes, if you serve him, you're going to be healthy. 
Praise God. Jesus is not coming for any sick body people. By the time Jesus comes, he is coming for his bride, of which we are the body of Christ, the people of God collectively. We are and the bride of God, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit said he's coming for his bride without spot and without wrinkle. It means all of those things of your life. I hear the Spirit of the Lord said in this month of January on this day, I want to remove all of the stains of your life. I want to remove the stains of your shame of the shame that you went through, the guilt, the shame. You know, every now and again, the devil tried to bring up the filth of your past, but the Lord said, I've washed away your shame. I washed away your past. I've washed away the idolatry of your life and of your ancestors, not by your own will. I, the Lord, thy God, I'm washing it. Hallelujah. Someone's watching right now. I sense it in the spirit. Hallelujah. You got you had a teenage pregnancy. Uh, maybe you've even had an abortion. Yeah, that's it. The Lord said, even the abortion, if you repent to me, I'm going to remove the guilt and shame, even of that abortion out of your life. I'm going to remove, hallelujah, some of you, I, somebody, a man is watching. You are so shame of the women you slept with. You being all around the town. The Lord said, I'm removing the shame and the guilt and the condemnation of the lifestyle you once lived. Hallelujah. Maybe you were pushing the droughts. You were a drug dealer. You were a pimp. You were a player. The Lord said, because you've come unto me. Last year, the devil beat you with shame and disgrace and defeat. But this year, the Lord said, you are my bride. I'm going to wash that guilt of your life. I'm going to wash that stain. No longer will the devil torment you day and night about your past. Hallelujah. There are some people in this, your city. I hear the Lord saying there are some people in your city who never believe. I was one of them. Hallelujah. There were some people in my city who didn't think I would come up to nothing. But praise be to God. Look at what God is doing. If the Lord can do it for me, he'll do it for you. What am I saying? Hallelujah. You don't need anybody's approval. I hear the Lord say, I have approved you. Hallelujah. For the work I've called you. I have approved you for the work. I have approved you for the ministry. I have approved you for the business. You're the one who should own the business. You're the one that should be the key voice in your city. The Lord said, I'm raising you as the key voice, not a stranger. You, yes, you said the Lord. And it's going to be a surprise because it's not by your might, nor by your power. It's going to be by the spirit of the Lord. And it's going to shock the enemy. But the Lord said, I'm going to make you, some of you listening and watching. The Lord said, I'm going to make some of you a sign and a wonder and a miracle. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Because in spite of your beginnings, and some of you, the Lord is showing me now, you had a hard beginning. Some of you were grown in poverty. Some of you, you went to school bare feet. Some of you, you went to school hungry. Some of you, you were rejected by family members and friends and loved ones. Some of you, you struggled in your teenage years. Some of you struggled to make it where you are. Some of you had a trying, testing life. But look at God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Some of you overcame all the odds. No one in your family ever made it out. No one, no one in your family got a degree. No one in your family became a professional. No one in your family ever got married. No one in your family ever had children. No one in your family ever was called to ministry. No one in your family was ever broken the back of poverty. But you and I, God is using to break us, a, 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 you know, a curse. I hear the Lord saying in 2021, a lot of curses are going to be broken. In the name of Jesus, I pray for someone listening and watching right now. The Lord say curses are going to be broken. What are those curses? Demonic obstacles. I curse that strong demon in your life that resists you. I break that strong demon. Hallelujah. In this 21, the first 21 days of this month, by the day the 21st hits, the first 21st days of this month, as you fast, as you pray, as you seek the Lord, the Lord said, I'm going to break that strong demon that your family, some of you, your ancestors dedicated the family line to certain demonic powers. And because of that, you only can go so far. 
Hallelujah. Some of you, anytime you try to break that barrier, it seems like depression and an obstacle stops you. Anytime you're about to get married, the devil breaks it. Now, anytime you're about to have a child, the devil stops it. Anytime you're about to get a new job, the devil breaks it. Hallelujah. Anytime you come up with an idea, when the deal is about to be settled, something stops it. I'm here to tell you the spirit of the Lord is showing me a demonic curse, a demon authority has been given through your ancestors worship and it has stopped you but the lord is saying today if you shout some of you ought to shout hallelujah as you begin to shout the lord say i'm sending fire some of you begin to shout some of you begin to shout i hear the lord saying as you shout i'm about to bring you victory wherever you are listening watch it shout in your room shout in your front room shout in your yard shout hallelujah yeah. And as you shout, some of you haven't done it yet. Hallelujah. You've got to get tired of being where you are. Hallelujah. We are in a prophetic atmosphere. The Lord is saying, if you shout, as you begin to shout, I'm about to pray something. And as I pray, it's not my power, but it's all the power of the word of Jesus Christ, the faith we have in it. The Lord says, I'm on, I am about to break the curse of the selling of your soul to demonic ancestries. What am I saying? I'm about to break the ancestral curse that your forefathers, your foremothers dedicated the whole family to idol demon gods. And you are trying to figure out why you couldn't break free. But today, by the Spirit of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the fire of God, the Lord said, I'm revealing it to you so you can break it and be set free. Hallelujah. On the count of three, I'm about to break. Every ancestral curse, every stronghold, every demon strong man, every demon that torments you, every demon that resists you, every demon that doesn't want you to rise up in Christ Jesus like you're supposed to, every demon that causes depression and fear and anxiety, every demon that causes fear. Every demon that causes perversion in your life, every demon that causes migraine headaches, every demon that causes infirmity and sickness and disease and lack, every demon that causes chest pains, every demon that causes stomach indigestion, every demon power that causes tension in your neck and your head, some of you behind your head, every demonic power that resists you from going to from poverty to prosperity. Hallelujah. I know they don't want to hear you, but Jesus became poor that you and I may become rich. Hallelujah. And if you're following Kilafo Kali and Kingdom Apostolic Ministry, you're not going to be poor and struggling and broke because we know the power of God make it rich. He make you rich. Now, all of you will be millionaires, maybe not, but I pray all of you do because you have enough work to reach your nation and you need the wealth of God. You need the prosperity of God. You need the faith of God to touch lives. You need to feed the hungry and clothe the naked and take the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world through media, through television, through radio, through books, through tapes, uh, to planting of missionary works, uh, to bringing out of tracts, and you need the blessing of the Lord. You need to eat. While others might be hungry, the Lord is going to send provision for his faithful people. So I pray right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, by the authority of the name of Jesus, I break the powers of dark ancestors. I break the altars where my ancestors and your ancestors uh, laid the family down on the line. Hallelujah. Laid down the descendants of the family. I break the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The ancestors, our parents, our grandparents, our great grandparents went to a witch doctor. I break witch doctors in the family line in the name of Jesus. I renounce witch doctors. I renounce obey workers. I renounce juju priests. I renounce uh, gurus. I renounce Brahmin priests from out of your generation. I renounce her. Hallelujah. Praying to Ganesh and Shiva and Vashti. I break. Hallelujah. The ancestral worship of Hinduism and Islam. I break the ancestral worship. I break the animal worship of the lion. 
blood of the snake uh, out of our generations from Africa, hallelujah, West Africa and South Africa. I break, hallelujah, those satanic altars that our family made on both sides, mother and father's side. Come on, pray with me. Come on, say it. Say, I break the curse. Uh, I cannot go on to 2021 under this curse. I refuse uh, to go, hallelujah. I hear the Holy Ghost. Uh, my wife and I, we were watching something the other day on TV with polygamy, hallelujah, and polygamy, polygamous lifestyle. I break polygamy. What is polygamy? One man with multiple wives. I break that out of our generation uh, from Africa. I break polygamy out of America. I break polygamy out of India. I break it from out of the tribes of South America. We break it from the Middle East. We break polygamy that causes a marriage destruction demons to operate in your life and mine. I break some young man free right now. You cannot get free from sexual perversion because polygamy is in your blood. Polygamy is in your generation. I break polygamy. I break polygamy, man and woman. You woman, you've come under families that are polygamy, polygamous, and so you have no hallelujah sense of worth because your parents and your grandparents, your great grandparents, had multiple women, and so all the women were uh, left to be nothing and devalued. I break that devaluation on your life, young lady. I break that curse of your life, young lady. That you feel every man that come in your life, it's okay for him to have five, six, seven different women on you, uh, and each one of you uh, have children and and live like his slaves. I break you out of the slavery of polygamy now in the name of Jesus. I break it by the Holy Ghost fire. 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 I break drug addiction. Wherever you are listening and watching, hallelujah, on our international television, on our global platform, Godfrey, God bless you, everyone listening, watching, Peter, hallelujah, give, I break the addiction and I release upon you every addiction. Every hidden addiction to whatever drugs it may be, alcohol, marijuana, nicotine, heroin, whatever drug it is, by the power of the mighty name of Jesus, by the power of the word of God, I release upon you through salvation in Jesus Christ, the anointing for addictions to be broken. Demonic powers, I command you foul demons that control the mind and the desires and the appetites and the emotion of people that drives them into slavery under the bondage of addiction by whatever addiction you are, whether it's pornographic addiction, whether it's alcohol addiction, whether it's drug addiction, whether it's masturbation addiction, whatever form of addiction you are battling with that brings you to shame and disgrace, whatever addiction of inhaling or smoking or drinking, whatever behavior, that is hurtful and painful to your life that continues to drag you down. I deal with it as a demon spirit and I command the spirit that holds you in captivity, the spirit that holds you in bondage, that held you in bondage from 2020 behind, that held you in bondage wherever you came in, by whatever year that you first came into their mind, into their hands. I hear right now, I speak that those hands and those feet, those ears, those eyes, those mouth, that heart, wherever, that body place, wherever that powerful demonic power came in, I command you out by the name of Jesus. And I declare you have victory in the name of Jesus. I declare deliverance by the mighty name of Jesus so you can serve your love, Jesus, with all your heart. Hallelujah. I declare right now, as we pray, stretch your hand toward the screen. Believe by faith. Hallelujah. Some of you, I hear the Lord say, if you don't get deliverance in this month of January, the devil is going to destroy many in 2021. I hear by the spirit of the Lord, this 2021, it's going to be either the saints are purged and righteous and go on into power, or those who do not take heed to getting their deliverance and cleansing this first month, the devil is going to use that thing in their life to destroy them. This year... It's going to be a year many will be destroyed who didn't take the heed. This year of 2021, those who did not listen to the Lord in spite of the pandemic, who refused to serve the Lord, they're going to be cut off one by one by one by the devil, and they're going to face eternal hell. I pray that's not you. Before this month is out, I hear the spirit of the Lord send this out. Share this. 
Text this, type this, hear me by the Spirit of God. If I be a true prophet of God today, and I've never said it this way, the Lord has sent me for this month of January. Something, oh, Kanda, Shanda Baba Shanda, and it will sign, yes, in August of 2019, by the Spirit of the Lord, I begin to prophesy all that year. That that something was going to happen. But in August, if you check the Facebook, the Spirit of the Lord came upon me heavily. We were in church service. And the Spirit of the Lord says something is going to happen in the month of September, the first week that is going to bring destruction on, on, on nations. Hallelujah. And it's also going to bring creative wealth and prosperity. Hallelujah. That first of September 2019, Hurricane Doreen came in and devastated the Western, most of the countries in the Western Hemisphere. I'm saying right now, by that same anointing, Rebe, by the same prophetic anointing, the Holy Spirit, I hear me, write this down, record it. Hey, Basha. By the Spirit of the Lord, I hear the Spirit of the Lord says something major is going to hit the world in the first week of February. The very first week. But the Lord said, I'm going to speak again to the world to return to me by the end of this January. Those who heed my voice will be in the uh, place of safety, said the Lord. But those who neglect my voice and my word, major shaking is going to happen in the earth and in the world in the 1st of February. I don't know if there's going to be a financial collapse. I don't know if there's going to be a new outbreak of something even more detrimental in combination with Corona. I don't know what's going to happen, but the Lord showed me the first week of February. The first week of February is going to make international news. Because the Lord said, I am angry with the wicked. The Lord said, I'm angry with the workers of iniquity. I'm angry with those who continue to do evil in my sight. But the Lord said, I'm going to cause a major move to hit the earth. A major thing is going to hit the earth. And it's going to shake the earth. And all men will know that I, the Lord, Thy God, I'm a jealous God. There are many, said the Lord, in my body who would try to pervert my gospel. Be careful, for there's a great deception coming in the earth, said the Lord. For even the apostles and prophets are take, telling my people not to look up, and they are, are taking them off the focus of my return. But they are more consumed about the earth realm than the establishment of my kingdom in the heavens and the earth. For it is my desire to restore the heaven and the earth as one under my lordship, said the Lord. For this earth is filled with the blood of the innocent, of the unborn babies. For this earth is filled with death and destruction, but this art is full of incorruptible things, said the Lord. And I can do only a few things left in the earth, said the Lord. But I must come, and behold, I will come quickly, and I will create a new heaven and a new earth, and I will create a new body, and I will create a new thing, and I will make it holy again. For the stench of sin has risen to my nostril. The stench of idolatry, the stench of heat and worship, the stench of flesh has come up, said the Lord God of hosts. And now I must purge this world with fire. I must purge this earth with a consuming fire of my presence. And I see hell enlarging. And the Lord said, I cry because hell is not the 
portion of my people. Hell is not my portion for my people. I call for you from the nations of the earth. I call you out of Islam. I call you out of paganism. I call you out of the occult. I call you out of idol worship. I call you out of sin. I call you out of false witness, out of false teaching. I call you out of Hinduism. I call you out of Mormonism and Buddhism. I call you. I'm calling. I'm calling. I'm calling. But if you do not hear my voice, uh, hell is a real portion that I must give to those who don't heed to my voice because with my precious blood I shed it for the world and if the world will not receive my blood and if they will not receive my nail pairs hands if they will not receive my nail pairs feet if they will not receive the redemptive blood of Jesus then hell is their portion said the Lord how many have lost focus for they've gone after the divination many have gone after dream interpretation many have gone after prophetic divination many have gone after palm reading many have gone after tapping into the realm of the spirit but they won't tap into the realm of my blood they won't tap into the realm of my cross but i'm calling one last time for you my people to get out of divination to get out of the realm of sorcery get out of idol priests get out of idol prophetic ministry come yes. back to me said the lord or i will blow out your candle i will remove your candlestick Oh nation, oh you that sit in the church and have not been changed. Oh you that are in the pulpit preaching and still living a lifestyle that's displeasing. Oh you that sing in my choir, but your hearts are filthy. Come back to me lest I destroy you, said the Lord. For destruction shall hit the earth. Baba Shanda de Leo, and Amanda de yes, said the Lord. Destruction will hit the earth. Calamity and disorder will hit the earth. None will be able to pray against it. For the earth is moaning and groaning, moaning and groaning, moaning and groaning. And the blood of the innocent cries out from the earth to the Lord of Hallows, saying, Defend us, defend us, defend us. And I, the Lord thy like God, I'm about to defend the blood of the innocent upon the nations of the earth. All oh, you nations uh, that turn away from me, all oh, you nations uh, that abort babies, all oh, you nations that implement homosexuality and pervert my laws, all oh, you nations that bring drugs, use, sorcery into the nation, all oh, you nations that call righteous sin and call sin righteousness. Oh, you nations, oh, you mothers, uh, hallelujah, that pervert my word for your children. Oh, you fathers that turn your hearts from the heart of the children. Infidels, oh, you priests and prophets and pastors who have lost my heart call that which is displeasing to me righteous i am coming and i will judge you openly and publicly said the lord the lord said there's an open judgment destruction that's coming what do you prophets what do you preach what do you pastors that don't preach my righteous word and cause man to come into my righteousness what to you destruction and despair to you repent and preach my word so my people can come to me get out of the way you're standing in the way of the sinner you that profess my name but you do wickedly among the heathens you are profaning my name among the heathens you are you are standing in the way of sinners you're sitting in the seat of the scornful. You're standing in the way of those who want to come to me and their blood is upon your head. Hallelujah. Their blood is upon you. Repent and come to your first love. Repent, change, turn around. Lest I smite you. Smite the whole earth with a curse. 
for the righteous shall be like Mount Zion. The righteous shall be like the trees of Lebanon. They will flourish. Hear me, said the Lord. The righteous, you shall flourish. You shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You're going to bring forth your fruit in your season. Your leaves shall not wither. Whatever your hands be put to do, it shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is a prophetic release from the Lord through our ministry today. I want to thank you, Dr. Kilafa Kali here from Kingdom Apostolic Ministry. Kindly visit our webpage, kamgbahamas.com. Check us out on Facebook. Go on YouTube, Kami Bahamas. Like and give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to Kami Bahamas on YouTube. Watch our program. There's more prophetic word and words of encouragement for you. Hallelujah. We thank you so much. Shalewa and I bring greetings to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Look for Amazon books that will bless your life. Thank you for staying to the end. Those on Facebook, Godfrey, Peter, God bless you. Some of you who came on, I can't see all of you. If I can see some of you, I will speak a personal prophetic word to you. Hallelujah. If not, hallelujah. So another time, those who have joined us and stayed with us on Zoom, God bless you. And all of the leaders around the nation, we speak strength into your life. We speak encouragement in your life. Know that the Lord will take care of you. He is faithful to do it. He did it for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He did it for David and Solomon. He did it for Elijah. He will sustain you and I. We're no different from them. Hallelujah. In fact, Jesus said, John is the greatest prophet of all, but the least in the kingdom is greater than John. So the least of us in the kingdom of Jesus Christ is greater than John the Baptist. It means we have greater power and authority in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. Look forward to watching us again this week. Uh, um, click the notification so when we come on, you will be hearing us. We're going to be teaching some powerful messages in this year by the grace of God. Should the Lord tarry, I am preparing the people of God for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm not attached to this world. We're here living in this world, but we're in this world. We're not of this world. We're a part of the glorious, bigger kingdom agenda, which is Jesus said, pray, my kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our whole life and ministry is about bringing the kingdom of Jesus Christ on earth now through every believer, through every saint, in every system of the world, system around the world, and CAMI leaders and KAGN, Kingdom Apostolic Global Leaders. That is our mission, our vision, and our assignment. We're going to do this by the strength of the Lord until Jesus comes, whether that's one day, five days, 10 years, 20 years. Every day we expect excitedly expect the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the rapturing and the taking up of the church, the, the, the restoring of all things unto the Lordship of our Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. That's going to happen. That old devil is going to be destroyed and bound and chained forever. And Jesus is going to have his earth and his people again to rule and reign forever. That is our blessed hope, this old world. We're going to just sit here and tell time, and we're going to occupy and rule, hallelujah, but we're not going to get comfortable with this old world system in Jesus' name. God bless you. Until next time, thank you for watching our powerful broadcast. We love you. Just wave your hands, everyone, so those people can see you. I see you. God bless you. We close out, and we say, may the peace of love you, love you, love you, love you so much. Love you. And the Holy thank you. Spirit. Rest, remain, and abide with you now, not only now, but henceforth and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, Shalewa, you want to bring greetings? Thank you for that word. I'm going to let Shalewa just bring greetings, though you're done. Praise God. I love you. See you next time. Love you. Love you. Love you. Too. Amen. Love you. Brothers, Peter, love you. Maxwell, love have you. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Hallelujah. Bye bye.